Hi everyone, Kim here at Olive City Homestead and in today's video we're going to do some harvesting because I have some veggies and some fruits that definitely I need to take care of before the birds get them. So come on with me and let's see what's ripe and ready to go in the house and use for baking or put up for the winter and yeah it's a super exciting time of year. I love July and August even despite the heat because it's harvest time. Do you see what I see? I see a pretty big zucchini that I need to harvest today. Look at that. It's nice and straight. It's like a torpedo. It's over a foot long and about three inches, three and a half inches across. Yeah, that's got to come off today. As does this yellow crookneck. I swear it was only about three inches yesterday and now it's about eight or nine and I want to get it off while it's still light yellow and soft. I don't really like them once they're dark and start hardening up which they do quickly. Zucchini is much easier to keep as it gets bigger and older. You can still grate it and use it but uh, the yellow squash super good when it's young and tender. Not so good when it's old although the chickens will eat it no matter what age it is. Another zucchini there. Oh and another one there and guys i gotta get more cucumbers off of this still need to harvest my burgess buttercup i've left it on the vine because uh, i didn't think it was ripe yet but i need to look back and see when i planted it and how long it's been and maybe research um an easy foolproof way to know when it's perfectly ripe that would be good to know Got some more blossoms and some more little fruit growing. Some Roma tomatoes ripening next to the artichoke. Some more. Oh yeah, definitely need to get those off. And do you see what I see there? I have red lung Chinese noodle beans. I also have some aphids on these plants. It's uh, the only plants in the garden that have aphids, so I need to get some ladybugs in here. I haven't seen enough of them this year. Hopefully I can find some when I'm at the feed store today. Otherwise, I'm going to order some online because I've been washing the aphids off every morning at about 6 a.m. to give the plants time to dry before the hot sun comes in. But that's getting pretty tedious, so I'd rather that the ladybugs come in and do their job for me because they're so much better at it than I am. But I am so looking forward to eating these Chinese red noodle beans because they're so good. They are so much better than green beans, guys. Oh, my ducks want a snack. Time to go feed them. Lots and lots of cherry tomatoes. I've got the sweet 100s and I also have a bunch of sun golds. As I've said before, these orange sun gold cherry tomatoes definitely are my favorites. The taste is phenomenal. I snack on them every morning for breakfast and I think today I'm going to harvest a bunch for pasta salad. Pasta salad is definitely one of my kids favorites. Mine too really and so summertime it's one of our favorite evening meals on a hot day and we need lots of cherry tomatoes for it. Fortunately we have them. So, one of my first jobs is to process these peaches. I have over 250 of them right now. Going to put most of them in the freezer. Also make some peach jam and peach cobbler. But I have a pear tree that um, a couple of the smaller ones have fallen off. They're soft and ready to eat right now. <laughs> it's amazing that the birds haven't got them. So I need to go harvest the pear tree today. So I need to get these peaches out of the way to give myself time and energy to do the pears. Of course, the squash keeps coming, so there's always some of that to do. Same, I could say, for the figs. I'm not complaining though. I'm definitely not complaining because peaches, figs, pears, and yes, zucchini and yellow squash, these are all great things to have in abundance during the summer and I'm going to be putting them up so that we can keep enjoying them throughout the year. Now the pears still on the tree, almost all of those are 
oh, almost twice as big as this. They're large ones, which is why they haven't fallen off. They're not quite to the soft, soft stage yet, but they're definitely ripe, and I need to uh, get them now. I need to harvest them by tomorrow at the latest before the birds decide to take them all. Now, if you've never had ripe, fresh pears right off of a tree, you can't even imagine how good they are. Besides these peaches right here, I have another two paper bags, the big grocery paper bags, full of them. Well, I'm about, oh, I don't know, a quarter of the way through the peaches. And I don't know if I said it before, but this is just one peach tree. I have another peach tree that the two cross pollinate each other and uh, it won't be ready for harvesting for another couple of weeks. And then I'll be doing that one. So yeah, this is 18 cups of peaches I'm gonna be putting in the freezer. I've got them on a cookie sheet here, laid flat so they'll freeze flat and I can stack them that way for the year. Um, yeah, I have another three quarters to go, I guess. So I won't put them all in the freezer. Again, I'm gonna make some jam and I'm gonna make some cobbler, but most of them will go in the freezer. Oh, and I am gonna leave some out fresh. We've been eating fresh uh, for a week or two now off the tree. And then I've got to get to those pears. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, you can freeze peaches probably in several ways, but I just skin them and slice them and put them in the baggies. Get the air out of the baggies before I seal them, and that's it. I don't cook them at all. I don't add any sugar or anything else. They're just fresh peaches frozen, and they work great all year for cobblers, and I like to make peach syrup with them. They make a really quick and tasty syrup um, from frozen. And also my probably favorite thing to do with frozen peaches is throw them in smoothies. So this is an exciting morning, an exciting season really. It's the first year that my four pear trees have really started producing, especially the two that are a year older than the others lots and lots of pears. Fortunately, they're successive. So this tree is the first one that's ready for harvesting of all my pears, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how many I get. I knew they were ripe because I came out a couple of days ago and there were a few on the ground, um, and they were not bothered by squirrels or birds at all, which I really don't understand because when I picked them up, they were soft and ripe, absolutely beautiful. So then I took one off the tree that came right off, and uh, yeah, these are ripe on the tree, ready to harvest. And pears are so delicious. I can't wait to have them for eating fresh and for baking with this week. I have this one branch that's come down super low. It's not in danger of breaking despite the weight on it because it's a really sturdy branch, but it is much lower than the rest of the tree. So we'll see, this fall I might take it out or might just shorten it and try to prune it to a bud that's going more horizontal than down. But, you know, if it wasn't for the looks of it kind of being odd, I really don't mind it. It's producing great. It's very sturdy. Yeah, we'll see. So, yes, aphids on the red noodle beans. But I'll tell you what, it looks like I won't be needing to go to the feed store to get ladybugs because the ladybugs have arrived. Yes, if you didn't know, if you haven't seen them before, this is what ladybugs look like in their very early stages. And I can see them here everywhere. There's a lot of them. I'm going to be interested in watching their progress on these uh, plants. I mean, I've been harvesting a lot of beans this week, but I think the plants would do a lot better if the ladybugs cleared the aphid infestation. Isn't it amazing what they look like and what they turn into? I find it really incredible. But I'm very happy they're here. And I will keep you updated on their progress. So my new bed full of winter squashes and some broom corn sorghum and moon and stars Cherokee watermelon is doing really well. And, you know, one thing that I've been surprised at and really pleased with is that no bugs at all have bothered the watermelon leaves. No squirrels have bothered the watermelon leaves and no birds have bothered the watermelon leaves. It's just done fabulous. And look what I spotted today. 
Do you see that? Not ready to harvest, but look at that beautiful moon and stars watermelon. You can see the big moon spot and at least one little star spot. There's actually a lot more if you were to be able to see it up close and out of the glare of the sun, but that's already about seven inches long and three or four inches across. It's growing quickly. And I know there's a lot of other smaller ones in here that I haven't spotted. A few I have, but yeah, if you haven't tried Moon and Stars watermelon, it is very, very delicious and just grows super well, even in intense heat. A few of my purple prince zinnias looking beautiful. And you know, as always, I'm impressed and intrigued by the fact that they look so different, zinnias do, at different stages of their development. Here is a younger one and older ones. And then as long as you keep watering them and have the right, you know, sunshine, you will see these develop and grow and change over time for weeks and weeks. I love that about zinnias. And here, mixed in with my chocolate pudding fruit, my black sapote tree that's growing in the middle, uh, are a bunch of Lilliput zinnias of all different colors. Yeah, there, there's the tree growth. Very nice and tender and green on top, doing very well. But these zinnias... Just looking marvelous. Oh, I love this orange one. They're a little on the small side, but then that's why they're called Lilliput. Oh, look at the color of that one. I don't know if it comes across. It's a creamy, I don't know, lemony or buttery yellow. Very nice. Dark orange. Yeah, just really loving these. I mean, what's not to like about so many little pretty flowers? Spider flower amongst the rhubarb. And the amaranth continuing to look fabulous. And now here is a, a double scarlet zinnia. I mean, it is a pretty red. I'll give it that. I'm just not a big red fan. So now I know that I won't grow this particular one again, at least not on purpose. <laughs> However, the beautiful orange ones, I definitely will. This one's just starting to bloom. Can't wait to see what it looks like next week. More gorgeousness. Now here are some lemony lime type zinnias that are about to come into bloom, but haven't quite yet managed it. Right in front of some beautiful snapdragons. The society garlic, so pretty. And oh, the aroma, the magnificent aroma of garlic that comes from this plant is amazing. You know, if you're not aware, society garlic is edible actually. Yeah, the leaves and the flowers, great in salads and quite decorative. But to be honest, I have to say, I prefer them out in the garden. Such a lovely smell and also a deterrent to a lot of different uh, creatures that don't like the smell of garlic. Well, that was fun. Thanks for joining me. I actually took a break, if you can call it that, and processed all the rest of those peaches. And I decided to wait until it gets a little cooler and then this evening go ahead and harvest the pears. So I'm really interested, what have you got growing and maybe is ready to harvest in your garden or from your fruit and nut trees? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any super cool or interesting recipes you've tried with your fresh veggies and fruits, well, let me know that too, because I love to use fresh veggies and fruits in the kitchen. And before I go, remember, you can create the life and the garden that you want so why not start right now? Have a great week, everyone, and I will see you again next time.